Let's begin. One. In the book of Sirach 24. Uh, Sirach 24, verse 34. The book of Sirach, chapter 24, verse 34. I want you all to listen up. Let's read. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. What is the word I'm looking for out of that? One word. Just say it. Don't need a mic. Just say it out. Labor. That's the word I'm looking for. Labor. Labor is the word. I labor not for myself only, but labor is the word. You want to get up out of here, you have to put your hand to the plow. It's not going to happen. It's not going to float down out of the sky. And when you read about the Acts of the Apostles, the disciples, the prophets, they stayed busy in God's work. So read one more time. Sirach, chapter 34, uh, 24, verse 34. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. It says, I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. So for all of us out here that are leaders, that, uh, that, that, um, that desire to be leaders, and I mean, once you are an officer, you're a leader on some level. And you're a leader in your own household as a man. Let me say this. But as a leader, you don't, need, you don't really need, even need a rank to be a leader. If you're leading people to God, you're a leader. So here's the thing. It's a job. It's a job. It, it's honestly the only job that really matters in your life. Your, worth, your, your earthly job that pays bills is secondary to God's work. So it says, one more time. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only. We don't labor for ourselves only. But for all them that seek wisdom. So we labor for all them that seek wisdom. So if everybody hears about seeking wisdom, guess what? That's what I labor for. I labor for all of you that seek wisdom. And that labor is whatever it takes. It's not just teaching y'all. It's going through whatever this, whatever the Most High brings about. We're going to do it together. But you're going to have to work at it. It's the only way you're going to get it. Let's go. Luke 17. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. So they asked Christ and demanded, when is the kingdom going to come? And Christ said, the kingdom of God cometh not by observation. You're not going to sit back and the kingdom is going to appear. You're going to have to do what? You're going to have to labor for it. And you're going to have to willingly want to labor. We're not begging anybody to do it. We're not trying to coax you. To, if you don't see the importance of getting up out this rat hole, <laughs> this captivity, then God bless your dumb soul. The kingdom of God cometh not by observation. You cannot say, so every one of us has a I'm talking to men. Every one of us has a vested interest in passing out every fly you can, every card you can, spreading the world, every language you can spread it in, wherever you can go. Because the king, God is not going to give the kingdom away. He gave us to before, he gave it to us, and we screwed it up. We didn't know what to do with it. He said, now you're going to work for it. You want it? Work for it. Okay, now how are you going to do that? You're going to labor. It don't come for observation. There got to be something inside of you that drives you, that moves you, that makes you want to do something. Luke 16. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like man, be strong. Okay, when it says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, 
quit you like men. What does it mean, quit? Does anybody know? Maccabees, what does the word quit mean? In the context that it is saying, it means conduct yourself like men. Right. Conduct yourself. Behave like men. So when it tells you here, it says, um, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. It says, behave or quit you like men. Be strong. You got the labor, not for yourself only, but all those that want to learn. You're going to understand the kingdom does not come by observation. You're not going to sing your way into the kingdom with gospel songs. Behave like men. Uh, Bishop, can we yeah. get the example of how Israelite men behave themselves? Sure. When it comes to the word of God? Yes. Um, I think it's First Maccabees 13. Hold this. We're coming back here. I'll read it for you. I believe. You want to explain it? Yes, sir. First Maccabees what? Uh, 13. Start with verse and, uh, 1. Yeah, yes, sir. First Maccabees 13 and 1. We go in here to show how to behave like man, like Paul said, Israelite man. And it says, now when Simon heard that Tryphon had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and to destroy it. The same thing that we're going against today is just in a different form. The Esau's war tactics have evolved. It's not as physical no more. Now it's more through media and other things of that nature. Go ahead. Verse 2, and saw that the people was in great trembling and fear, he went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together. So this is the first thing of an Israelite man. It's not, he don't think, this is not me by myself. I'm not going, it's not me that's going to win this whole battle by myself. Let me get the people together. Unity. Read on. Let me say something real quick. Uh -huh. It says he gathered the people together. The only way you're going to gather people together is they got to see you as a man. Yep. If you're a little boy and you're playing video games and you're a clown and you can't get... Nobody's going to follow you. People follow people who they respect. Spiritual minds, they respect. Some people are good brothers, but they have different... They're, they're good at maybe administration help. But to lead people, you got to be grave in the scripture and you got to carry yourself, behave yourself like men. So it said, Simon was able to gather the people. I know me, I'm not following. I can tell you now, if I don't see you as a man, I'm not following you. And I have no problem following anybody that's saying what's right. But I got to see another man in his face and say, yeah, okay, he's a man. Okay, cool. I'm not following no boy. I'm not following no 50 old video game player. I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm sorry. Verse I, three. I was just venting. All right. Um, verse three. Verse three. And gave them exhortations, saying, Ye yourselves know what great things I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the laws and for the sanctuary, the battles also that troubles, I said the battles also and troubles which we have seen. Verse 4. Verse 4. By reason whereof all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake, and I am left alone. So... When it says behave like men, the first thought of an Israelite man is his people. So we all got family. We all we got kids. We got uh, sisters in this truth, brothers in this truth. But when it comes to leading the people, behaving like men, you think of the greater good just like who? Who thought of the greater good instead of himself, brothers? Christ. Surprise only a handful of y'all knew that. All right. Verse 5, sir. Verse 5, I apologize. It says, Now therefore, be it far from me that I should spare mine own life in any time of trouble, for I am no better than my brethren. When it comes to being an Israelite man, all of us behaving like Israelite men, like Corinthians says, I mean like Paul says, it's a certain level of humility that you got to have as a leader. The Most High is dealing with all of us here in a different way. Some of us may know more scriptures than somebody else. Somebody may be more eloquent with the tongue than somebody else. Somebody in here may know how to gather people together, administrate this or that. 
But at the same time, a, a leader will be humble and say, I'm no better than the next man right next to me. Because he got a role to play just like I got a role to play to get where we all want to be. I can't get there without him. He can't get there without me. That's why we come together. Next verse. Verse 8. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary or wives or with children for all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. Do you see what our forefather Simon said? He didn't say, I'm going to fight for my wife, my kids. Are you all with me? He didn't say that. He said, doubtless, I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and our wives and our children. That's family. That was family. He said, and for all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. And after he spoke those words, he behaved himself as an Israelite man. It said, now, as soon as the people heard these words, their spirit revived. And that's what we have to do. We have to behave ourselves as Israelite men, letting our people know that we are here fighting for you because our people's spirits have been destroyed in Babylon. And they need to hear the gospel from you so their spirit can revive. That's what it means to behave like an Israelite man, what Paul's going into. So that's it, Bishop. Hey, real quick, um, go back to verse, uh, I think it's four. Verse four, first Maccabees chapter 13, verse four. By reason whereof all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake, and I am left alone. And you see that in the, in the midst of knowing that it was the possibility of death. The brother or Israel, uh, Israelite man, a leader, real leader, will still sign up to make sure that he takes care of his brothers, his sisters, the children. With the possibility of thinking of, of, of losing his own life, he still signs up. That's what it talks about. The kingdom doesn't come by observation. It's heavy. We put we are the first responders in every situation as leaders. If you brothers want to be leaders, which I pray you all do, because the, the scriptures say he's going to make us a nation of kings and priests, which is leaders. So that's our job. That's it. Uh, back to yeah. Corinthians. Uh, where we at? Second Ezra. So I want to read something real quick. Second Ezra 10 and 10. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse 10. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse 10. For out of her came all at the first and be and out of her shall all others come. And behold, they walk almost all into destruction. And a multitude of them is utterly rooted out. So this is talking about the nation of Israel being utterly rooted out. Now, when we read earlier, uh, there's a, a mother mourning over her, the loss of her child. And she's, let's go. I, you know, I can't explain that. I got to go back. and. I know, I yeah. Now, I want to I want to explain it fully because they're not going to understand it. All right. You just want to give the a summation of it? Yeah, read verse 40 oh, just, on down. Read from where? Verse 40 on down in 2nd Ezra 9. I can read quick. Uh, go ahead. Second Ezra chapter nine, verse 40, second Ezra chapter nine, verse 40 and said unto her, wherefore weepest thou? Why art thou so grieved in thy mind? And she said unto me, sir, let me alone that I may be well myself and add unto my sorrow for I am sore vexed in my mind and brought very low. And I said unto her, what aileth thee? Tell me. She said unto me, I, thy servant have been barren and had no child, though I had an husband 30 years. And those 30 years, I did nothing else day and night and every hour, but make my prayer to the highest. After 30 years, God heard, my, heard me, thine handmaid, looked upon my misery, considered my trouble and gave me a son. And I was very glad of him. So was my husband also and all my neighbors. And we gave great honor unto the almighty. And I nourished him with great travail. So when he grew up and came to the time that he should have a wife, I made a feast. Yeah. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse one. And it so came to pass that when my son was entered into his wedding chamber, he fell down and died. Then we all overthrew the lights and all my neighbors rose up to comfort me. So I took my rest unto the second day at night. And it came to pass when they had all left off to comfort me to the end, I might be quiet. Then rose I up by night and fled and came hither into this field as thou seest. 
And I do now purpose not to return into the city, but here to stay and neither to eat nor drink, but continually to mourn and to fast until I die. So she was, she was sorrowful. She lost a child uh, and she was ready to starve herself to death. Read on. Then left I, my, I the meditations wherein I was and spake to her in anger, saying, Thou foolish woman above all other, seest thou not our mourning and what happeneth unto us? How that Zion, our mother, is full of all heaviness and much humbled, mourning very sore. So it says, don't you see the bigger picture? What is ha- You're worrying about your one son that died. Don't you see the whole nation what it's going through? Read on. And now, seeing we all mourn and are sad, for we all are in heaviness, art thou grieved for one son? He says, are you grieved just for your one son? Don't you see the bigger picture? It's not about the one individual. Now, we understand her mourning because she lost her son. But what he's trying to say, the selfless act of a righteous person, is you put it in his perspective. But if you want to weep like that, well, then there's many sons that have died. The acts of the apostles and of all righteous people always was about the betterment of everybody. Everybody, not one. One mourn, we all mourn. One joy, we all have joy. Read on. Verse 9. For ask the earth and she shall tell thee. No, I don't need all that. That's all I needed. So let's go back. Verse um, Corinthians 16. Uh, verse what? 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Yes, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like man, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. It says, let all your things be done with charity. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Charity suffereth long. And the, the, the spirit of charity suffereth long. And it's kind. Read on. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Charity does not seek her own. It's always about the body. So when it says back in uh, Corinthians 15 verse 14, it says, let all things be done with charity. Read on. 1 Corinthians 16, 14, let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. It says that that this house has addicted themselves to the ministry. They addicted themselves to the ministry. When you addicted to something, there is nothing more important to that person. If you, if any of us grew up in the hood, you know what a crackhead is. Tazaya. And you understand a crackhead don't care about nothing other than getting that crack. It will, it will forsake everything to get what it wants. So when you're addicted to this ministry, you wake up, you go to sleep. Your whole premise is how do I bring about the kingdom? What should I do? How do we take care of the body? How do we move as a unit? Definition of addictive. Merriam's. Go down to Merriam's. There we go. Uh, It says, addict, addict. To devote or surrender oneself to something habitually or obsessively. It says to be obsessed with something. To devote or surrender up your life. So when somebody's addicted to the faith, to the ministry, they surrender their life up to doing nothing other than that. But here's the point. When you do that, there's a recompense. The most high, God said, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first and everything else shall be added unto thee. So what's, here's the point I want about that, about this whole addicting yourself to the ministry. Read that verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, ye know that the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Now watch this. They addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, and next verse says what? 
that ye submit yourselves unto such and to every one that helpeth with us and laboreth. It says that ye submit yourself unto such. So what is the same? It's telling you when you find those that their lives are addicted to the ministry, getting the work out, submit yourself to them. There's nothing that is asked of you from any of you that I wouldn't do. To them you submit yourself. You don't be your fool and submit yourself to somebody that ain't going to labor like they want you to labor. That's a, you be a sucker. You, you freaking dudes ask me to do something that you, I, I ask you to do something that I won't do. But you submit yourself to one that is addicted to God's work. It says, uh, this, uh, submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Remember, I labor not for myself only, but for all that seek wisdom. Hold this. Drop that. I'm sorry. Not hold it. Let's go to 1 Timothy's. Yes, please. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear to all. So listen to what Paul told Timothy. He said, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly unto it. There's no other reason why we wake up. Oh, where's the phone? Oh, there's no other reason why we wake up. Go to bed. Do everything we do. We're supposed to give ourselves holy unto this. Now watch this. Give thyself holy that what? To them to uh, and give thyself holy to them that thy profiting may appear to all. It says give yourself holy unto them that your profiting might appear. So give yourself holy unto this word. The most has said you're going to profit by it. He's going to take care of you. So the act, let's, let's try to understand the acts of the apostles. Ephesians. Chapter two. Mm -hmm. Verse. Uh, start with verse 18. Ephesians chapter two, verse 18. Ephesians chapter two, verse 18. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the father. Read on. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God Read on. and are built up upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. It says that you're no longer strangers. He was talking about the church of Ephesus. You're no longer strangers. And you're built up upon the foundation of the apostles. For a foundation to be laid, work has to be done. Mm -hmm. So for all of us here, you, you men, you're going to have to hit the streets. You're going to have to get this work out. You're going to have to labor. And you're not doing it for yourself only. But for all those seek learning. It says that you be built up upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. You know, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone that hold this whole building up. Read on. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. And guess what? In whom all the building fit, fitly framed together. Now, this work, as we go out and teach this work, we're gonna, the most I go start sending laborers in. People with different skills. And together, we're going to fitly frame them together. You're going to have some brothers with the skill that can help us speak the different languages. You're going to set them in place as a leader. You're going to know where to use those men at. You have the other brothers that understand finances. That's going to help us save money. That's going to know real estate. That's going to know how to get into countries that we can't get into. 
And once the Most High set them, we're going to fitly frame them together. And all this is to what? To grow God's kingdom. But it's going to be built upon something. That's why it says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Because a lot of people talk about it, but they don't want to put the labor into it. It's convenient, um, you know, Saturday for a couple hours this week. I don't know, I'm, you know. No, I don't, not feeling well today. But if it was a job and payday, you'd get up and power through it. Many people hear this, it sounds good. But to put their hand to the plow and work, and we're going to read how Christ operated. We're going to read how the apostles operated. This was their life. This is what they had. It says, read that verse again. Verse uh, 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. That growing unto the holy temple is this body. What does it say that again? Is that Corinthians 12? Which is fitly joined together? Fetus, or is it Romans 12? Oh, I think it's Corinthians, right? Oh, Romans, uh, guess what it is? Ephesians, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Ephesians uh, 4. Ephesians 4, 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. Now, what were we just reading? Ephesians 2. 2. Watch 21. this. Let's read Ephesians 2 real quick again. Ephesians, 21. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. The building fitly framed together will grow. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. Verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Say the same exact thing. From whom the whole body fitly joined together. It says, and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Each one of us supplies part of this body. It says, um, supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body. Now, how is that going to happen? By laboring, coming together. And we come together to the perfecting of the saints. Let's go. Uh, now watch this. Read 4 and 1. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you would walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So you better walk worthy of the vocation that you're called into. Let's go back. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also are builded together for an habitation of God through the spirit. So in whom ye are also, it says in whom ye also are builded together. All this comes about by labor, by teaching. So think about the acts of the apostles. Think about what they were sent to do. Go to, go to, um, real quick. I want to go to Matthews 28. book of Matthews chapter 28 uh, verse 18 Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations do you understand what he told the apostles he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. How do you think they were going to do that? You think they are going to do it on Facebook Live? <laughs> they are going to YouTube it? It wasn't like they was, those nations was right around the corner either. Right. It wasn't, 
you think there was you think there was you know you know Southwest Airlines? When he told him go ye therefore into all nations, he said get up, travel, and do the work. So many of the disciples, the apostles, they had families, they had children, they had wives. A a a, a trip to Corinth or wherever they were going wasn't going to be a little two-hour flight and I'll be back on Thursday. How long do you think they was going for? Months. Months? Years. Years? Go ye therefore and teach your nation. He tell them you got a lot of work before you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. So where's the scripture at? The harvest is plentiful. Let's see who knows it. Nobody. Oh, go ahead. Who's that? Oh, go ahead, Jude. Yeah. Well, let's go to it. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 36. The book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. He's saying the harvest, oh people, they destroyed. It says the harvest is truly plentiful, but the people do the work are very few. So he's trying to tell you, it's a lot of work. Read on. Verse 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And we pray that the Most High is going to send forth more laborers. We're praying that some of you brothers take it upon yourself to grow. To take the initiative to move and hasten this kingdom to come about. But know for certainty the harvest is plentiful. That's why he says, go and teach all nations. Yeah, go ahead. Gonna say. Uh, it was an uh, example about when you were saying like, it, you know, they said go teach all nations. It wasn't like it was just a two-hour flight. Um, an example about that is in Acts chapter 11. Mm-hmm. Uh, Acts chapter 11. Uh, I'll start at verse 22, and 26 is the point. I'll, I'll read through it quick I'll, here. I'll read it. Acts chapter 11, verse uh, 22, on down. The book of Acts. The 11th chapter and the 22nd verse. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. Those tidings was that the scattered had heard the word and they began to believe those tidings. It was good news to those in Jerusalem. Read on. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Go where? As far as Antioch. So that was one. They heard the good news. We got a disciple sending as far as Antioch. Read on. Who when he came and was seen, the grace of God was glad and exhorted and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. So he's exhorting them in the word of God. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord. So they sent out this disciple who was a good man, full of the spirit, knew the scriptures. And by him going out teaching the chief cornerstone, Christ, many people began to believe. For somebody to trust you enough to send you out to the people of the Lord, they got to know he know what he's talking about when we send him. We ain't got to worry about him. And they got good word that he was bringing in the people, right? Read on. Verse 26. I'm I'm sorry. 25. 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarshish for to seek Saul. Uh Uh-huh. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. So when you said Christ told him to go and teach ye all nations... He will, at this time, it wasn't a two-hour flight. When you got that word to go teach the people of God, the disciples knew, I might be gone 
for a whole year teaching the people of God. As we said, the kingdom cometh not by observation. It's going to come that time again where some of us might be called on at a point. They got wife and kids at home. We might have to give up something. And the church say, don't worry about it. We'll provide for you. Just go do the work of the Lord and you'll be gone for a whole year. Sisters, you got to get your spirit built up. If your if your Lord is that disciple that's called on, you can't be like, no, don't go. I'm going to miss you. You got to know in your mind, well, this is for the people of the Lord. It's for the kingdom. I'll be with you in the spirit. FaceTime me. <laughs> and no. You brothers got to go. That was what was required of the disciples at that time. And they'll come again to do that. That's it, Bishop. Good point. That's why it says go to 1 Corinthians. We're going to come back to what we was pulling earlier. Go into 1 Corinthians 7. Seven twenty nine, First Corinthians chapter seven verse twenty nine, the book of First Corinthians chapter seven verse twenty nine. But this I say, brethren, the time is short; it remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. It says the time is short, and they that have wives be as if you don't have one. Does that mean that you don't take care of your wife? No, that doesn't mean that you don't take care of her, but you have a greater plan. You got God's business to attend to. You could be my wife in this captivity or you could be my wife in the kingdom. Trust me, it's better in the kingdom than this captivity. (laughs) Be as you have none. Why why did it say be as you have none? Let's jump on down to verse 35. Verse 35. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely. And that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. That you can attend upon God's business without distraction. So I'm talking to you men. The kingdom of heaven cometh not by observation. You want to get out of here? These were the acts of the apostles. It wasn't caught up with the everyday wifey stuff like that. They was about bringing about the kingdom. They were leaving their homes and some of them wasn't making it back home ever. Mm. Losing their life behind it. Wives without husbands. Children without fathers. But it was about God's business. That's why I asked the question yesterday about brothers who want to be part of 144. You sure you know what you're asking for? It's not as simple as saying it. God wants something back in return. He's not, he's not going to give it away. He's not giving it away. All right. So what, we, what was the last scripture we had before this one? Uh, Matthew 9, 35, 36. Oh, yeah, harvest. the harvest was plentiful. What I had before that? First uh, Timothy, right? Uh, chapter, oh, Matthew 28. That's what Matthew 28. Let's go back to 28. That's right. Watch this. Matthew 28. 19. Uh, yeah. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He said, even unto the end of the world. Wherever you go, he said, you're going to be at the end of the world. I hope, you, I hope for brothers who's been around for a few years now, if you've been around for at least three to four years here, you should have seen some things transpired over the last few years. I'm talking within this congregation. With the travels and what's happening. Even to the end of the world. If it be the most high's will, where we're venturing into now, where we're teaching. We're on our way down to the Congo soon. We have people in Liberia, Uganda, Sierra Leone, Cape Verde, 
Yeah, we got 13 brothers in Germany. We got uh, some families in France. Uh, we just came back from Brussels. We got some in Italy. Uh, a couple in Korea. Uh, Japan. Um, <laughs> Hawaii. South Africa. Throughout the Caribbean. And every major city in Babylon. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So who's up for the charge? The Acts of the Apostles. And I like the precept you pull, that it was gone for a year. So understand that, gone from people that love them, their everyday way of life, they were addicted to the ministry. So right now, we just warming ourselves up right now. Most of our plans give little baby steps, baby steps, start wrapping our minds around this concept and doing it on a low level, moving around. But as time comes, it's going to intensify. It's going to be a lot more work, a lot more people, add on to the church thousands and thousands, in some cases by days. Somebody's going to have to labor and do it. Because certainly, that's why Moses said, I wish they all were prophets. Because one man can't do it. I was just on a call recently with a brother, and he's dealing with he's dealing with congregations in three different parts of the world. When I say congregations, I shouldn't say I say countries or regions. I mean countries, more than one country, three different parts of the world by himself. Now, he got help, but the point what I'm trying to say is that. The the uh, the volume is so much, but uh, this is what we're called to do. All right, let's go. Mark six. The book of Mark, chapter six. I want to start with verse six. The book of Mark, chapter six, verse six. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Uh, no, let's start a little higher. Uh, start with verse 3. Mark chapter 6, verse 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and, of, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So ain't that just Joseph's son? Read on. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. The reason I'm reading that for is because Christ would go other places and he would be received. And that's a lot like today. In your own city, a lot of, a lot of people don't see you or see the men as teaching as prophets of God. All right, just so-and-so, yeah, he's right here. And then you'll go into other parts of the world where they see you, and they see you as the messenger of God. Here is where the word sprung up out of, out of, out of America. So many of us that are uh, in the different various cities um, have the opportunity to get this word. You can walk into a school. Right now, we just opened a school um, in, uh, what was, it? What was the, the Hamite country? Liberia. They're always watching the IUI's class on a cell phone, and not 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 a big one. It was more like a little those old iPhone things. All of them were sitting like in front of the thing to watch it, trying to get the word. Meanwhile, when you're in cities like this, where you have a wealth of information, you can ask questions readily. I got a question. You can pick up the phone and call. You can raise your hand. A lot of times, people take that for granted. They don't see it. They would love to be in cities. I've been in cities here in the states where they're like, damn, I wish we had leadership there, somebody who could show us, who could be there. But Christ said the same thing, that the prophet gets no honor. You men are being raised, you are gods on earth, you just haven't fully wrapped your mind around that, that you are the reason why this earth is still even in existence, all of you as Israelites. But you men are the vehicle which is going to turn this world upside down and set us back on top. You just got to be groomed up to that. The water, look what it says. Read on. Um, Mark chapter 6 verse 5 
And he could there do no mighty work, save that he said that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. So even with the unbelief, what did Christ do? He went round about the villages teaching. He was laboring. That's what he was doing. We don't. Verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. So now he went round about teaching in the villages. Well, he could only hit so many villages. He's only one man. So he called the disciples. And he said, listen, y'all got to go out. You have to labor. Can't do it by myself. I can only be in so many villages at a time. There's but so many countries and villages, Nathaniel, or myself could be the captain. Some of the deacons could be at a time. We need some of you men to raise up. Some of you brothers who can speak Creole, you need to raise up and go out there, learn, and we need you out there in Haiti. Some of you brothers that can speak Spanish, we need you out there. Some of you brothers that are strong in your English, we have countries like Brussels where they speak English. You'd be surprised. A lot of countries speak English. Can't do it. It's impossible to do it just by a handful of men right now. To really make that impact. These are the acts of the apostles. Is there more behind it? Um, no, sir. Yeah, uh, you have a precept you want to use? Uh, saying the same thing, just a little expounding on it a little more. Let's, Let's go. Uh, Luke chapter 4 and verse 42 and 43. Uh, the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 42. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. So Ooh. going into that is maybe brothers don't, you, you don't get to the point of you traveling country to country, but we got an example here where the Lord is going city to city, preaching the kingdom of God. Maybe until the Lord called you to go travel from city to city like you was bringing up, Bishop, Captain Hoshia is a traveling man, city to city. With a wife and children. That may be some of you brothers' part, your role right now, and the bishops do theirs where they go country to country, and then until the kingdom come, it keeps on revolving. You get to the point where the bishops are, and the brothers that are under you, they now hitting the city, and now we keep gathering in the harvest until Christ come. That's it, Bishop. If you, I'm telling you something. Uh, those that pay attention to what's going on in the body, you would know Nathaniel is, he is rarely home. <laughs> he is rarely home. Um, myself, I could tell you, if I sit, thank you, if I sit in, in the congregation in Austin once a month, that's about fair, right? about once a month and I still ain't even going around Texas. I haven't really had the opportunity to get around Texas. Thank you. But we need more men to stand up to the charge. We need you to come and learn, 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 learn. And then mirror yourself and pattern yourself after the apostles that you read, after the example that's being set forth. Because that's the only way we're going to get up out of here is by laboring in this. So when I be hearing excuses and this, I be like, oh gosh, okay. This guy, he's, he don't get this thing yet. He don't get it yet. You're no different from any other apostle that had household wives and business and anybody else. We can always find reasons on why we can't do something. We can find millions of reasons on why. We need that one reason on how or the one solution on how you get it done. Okay. Sirach 34. 
Uh, let's do Sirach 39, I should say. The book of Sirach, chapter 39. Uh, Sirach 34, verse 9, I meant. Sirach, chapter 34, verse 9. Sirach, chapter 34, verse 9. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things, and he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. He that hath no experience knoweth little, but he that hath travail is full of providence. When I traveled, I saw many things, and I understand more than I can express. I was oft times in danger of death, yet I was delivered because of these things. And he was delivered because of what? Who knows what? He was delivered because of what? Yeah, go ahead. The experience that he gained from traveling. Right. Which gave him the wisdom, right, the experiences. But the point I wanted about a man being well-traveled. So let's read that verse again. Sirach, chapter 34, verse 9. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things, and he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. It says, a man that hath traveled knoweth many things. So it's going to take you to what? Traveling comes about you doing the work. City to city. What do you learn? I'm telling you something. A lot of times um, I would speak and I would tell brothers, yo, yo, Captain, I see these things. I'm telling you, watch this, da 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 It's not because of some great wisdom like that. It's that I've been, I have some experience, and I could tell you that ain't going to work. Look, I'm telling you, just trust what I'm saying. Just watch this. Watch how this had, watch how it plays itself out. That comes from years of experiencing things. Part of that experiencing, and you experience those things by what? By laboring. I said this before, um... I'm not going to make it long, but if you was an Israelite, at least when I came around in New York City, it's impossible that I would not know you or Nathaniel wouldn't know you. If we didn't know you, it's because you wasn't in the street laboring because it was a small group of people back then in New York City for the most part. Uh, and I can tell you even to this day, the ones that were back then laboring, that are in different perspective congregations now, you could tell the difference. Even some of the bug that they mind, but they have the mind to work. You'll see them out in the corners. They understand, they understand that much that you got to be doing the work. You have to be laboring. You have to be teaching. That's what we call for, to be in the highways and byways. There's a lot of this new generational ones in some of these congregations that don't, you know, it don't grab them. But then you point back to the point was that in that years of traveling or experience, I could tell you, I can kind of tell you what not to do. I can show you, don't go in this direction. Or this is the right thing to do. Even sometimes to a point, I'm like, stop even thinking. Everybody knows what I tell you. Don't think. I'm just going to tell you. Just trust. Even if you don't understand what I'm saying, just do what I'm telling you to do. It's going to save you a whole lot of heartache. Let's read on. Verse 10. Verse 10. He that hath no experience knoweth little, but he that hath traveled is full of prudence. When I traveled, I saw many things. When I was out doing the work, I saw many things. And I understand more than I can express. He says, I understand more than I can even express. That's a man with a lot of experience. Verse 12. I was oft times in danger of death. What you was in danger for death for? Doing the work. Read on. Yet I was delivered because of these things. You were delivered from said danger because of wisdom. But you was in danger for doing the work, for laboring. I want to keep on going back to the Acts of the Apostles. Let's go to Acts, the 19th chapter. Acts chapter 19, verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he so, sent. So, in, this is what it says. Read that again. 
after these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia. He passed through Macedonia. And Achaia. Read on. To go to Jerusalem. To get down to Jerusalem. Saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. Okay. Can you open up a map real quick for me? Open up a map for me real quick. Just put Google Bible map. Oh, perfect. <laughs> How does work? Okay. This is Spain. This is France, Italy, Rome. This is Macedonia. Here go Achaia. So read it now. Acts chapter 19, verse 21. After, after these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia. He passed through Macedonia. And Achaia. Well, to get to Achaia, he had to pass through Thessalonica, which is the book of Thessalonica. To go to Jerusalem. He went to Achaia to go all the way down here to Jerusalem. Saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. Back over here. <laughs> so that's why he says, that's why he said, if you have, to, if you have a wife, be as you have none. That's why he knew God's work was too easy. I don't have no time for no woman right now. Because when you have a wife, you got to care for the things of the wife. He was focused. He was addicted to his ministry. Let me tell you something. If you're flying to these places, it's a job. How was he traveling? By ship? You understand what it took to do these things? Read on. Verse 22. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Aristotus. Read. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Okay, here's Asia. Go back to the map. Here's, here's Asia right here. He stayed in Asia. That's that, They go Ephesus right here. Get Read on. Oh, he said for how? A Asia for a season. I said a season is, you know, we got four seasons, three to four months. So he was away for at least three, three to four months. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Read on. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver strides for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that these be no gods. So which, Paul, Paul, not at Ephesus only, but all Asia. I don't you think Asia, you think China, but that's not, that's down here. Over there somewhere. He says he turned away many from worshiping that God. Guess what? Kingdom doesn't come by observation. <laughs> Got to be out doing the work. It's the only way it's going to happen. Read on. Verse uh, 27. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught. But also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificent should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the whole world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, man of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel. They rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. So Paul, when he was going to enter into where the people was up, the disciples said, now, nah, Paul, hold back. Paul wasn't concerned about himself. He was like, I'm about this work. They had to stop him and say, yo, listen, this is not the wise thing to do, Paul. Hold back. Read on. And when Paul would have entered into the temple, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some so, therefore. So now you have some of the chief people of Asia 
who had met a renown, was telling Paul, no, don't do it. So Paul still had the mind to go in there. Read on. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. For the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of Ephesus. Do you understand the backlash for two hours they screamed that out? You ever seen a heckling a screech? I'm a street in a street. Imagine the whole city screaming "Great is Diana" for the space of two hours. A matter, um, just just try to matter, imagine the battle that was going on in this. Watch this. Uh, let's just uh, jump on down. Let's jump on down to verse forty. Forty. Acts nineteen, verse forty. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. There being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Okay, now watch this. Read on. Uh, Acts 20, verse 1. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed for to go into Macedonia. So after all that, Paul left from here and said, okay, I got work to do. I'm going back up into Macedonia. So he went from here around here to come to here, to come over here, to come back over here. Read on. Verse 2. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. And after that, okay, this would be considered Greece. Macedonia was a separate state. Greece would be down here. This would be uh, Sparta, Athens right here. That became Athens is what Achaia was. Read on. Verse 3. And there abode three months. There you go. And when the Jews laid wait for him. And he was about to sail into Syria. He purposed to return through Macedonia. He was going to go to Syria, then return back to Macedonia. Hey, hey Bishop, this yeah. goes into a, a little bit later what you, you'll go into. It says, and the Jews laid wait for him. Right. It ain't like you're going to go over uh, casting down uh, Allah and Buddha right, and, right, 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 and right. Scientology. And Christianity in some places, and you're going to walk back out like it ain't nothing. It's going to be some people that are laying wait for you <laughs> to make sure you don't you don't leave spreading that stuff nowhere else and make sure you don't come back again mm-hmm. saying that stuff. Yep. You'll go into that later. Um, Let's go. V- verse 4. And they're accompanying him into Asia. So Peter uh, of Berea and of Thessalonians. Aristarchus and Secundus and Gaius of Derby and Timotheus and of Asia to Caius and Tromophius, a Trophomus. These going being being before Terry for us at Troas. So here come the laborers coming along to get this work done from different countries coming together to get this work done. Now watch this. Uh, verse yes. Verse 6, and we sailed away from Philippi. There's Philippi right here. Philippi would be right around here. Read on. After the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, and where we abode seven days. So they traveled five days to abode someplace for seven days. Read on. Uh, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. Drop that. Let's jump on down. Uh, verse, verse 13. Verse 13. And we went before to ship and sailed unto Asosis. There intended to take in Paul, for so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. Read on. And when he met with us at Asosis... We took him in and came to Mytilene. I'll drop that. I want you to jump to. That's a lot more. I don't want to read all that. Let's jump to chapter 21. Acts chapter 21, verse 1. And it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Coes, and the day falling unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patara. Do you see the work that's being done here? Read on. 
and finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Read on. Now, when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unlaid her burden. Okay, that's enough. That is just a small segment of the labors they did, of Paulie's men. A small bit. Remember what Christ told the apostles? Go into all the ends of the world, earth. Go into all nations preaching this. These, these men, one, if you had a wife, she had to have been spiritual. Because she had to understand the greater mission. She would have to understand she's going to stay home and hold down her children. She's going to take care of the household while you're gone. And when you can get back, you get back. What do we have to lose back then? Nothing. We was under subjection to another nation. What do we have to do today to lose? Nothing. We're under subjection of another nation. Watch this. Let's go to Matthews now. Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Read on. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum. Now he entered into Capernaum. Read on. Came unto him a centurion beseeching him. So wait a second. One man came to him asking for help. He came down, entered to Capernaum. Another man is beseeching him. Read on. Verse 6. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented and jesus saith unto him i will come and heal him the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this man go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it and when jesus heard it he marveled and said unto them that follow Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. Stop right there. So here, the point I want to make. He came, he came down. He healed one. The, the, the centurion came to him. He, he was helping him there. Verse 14. Verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of fever. And he touched her. And the fever left her. And she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. So do you see this? Mm -hmm. Christ. So he went from one to another. Left from there, came home. Peter's mother-in-law is sick, healed her. And in the evening time, the, the multitudes follow. So, and what was he doing? Teaching them. Christ has always been the example for us. That whatever he asked of us, he himself did. Back to the question, brother asked, oh, what makes a good leader? Christ, he's, he's the epitome of tireless labor. To the point he had to hide to get a second or try to move up into the mountaintops to just get a second to gather himself. Sidebar, so those that know me sometimes, they know when you try to talk, like, no, nope, don't talk. I don't want to hear no problem. I don't want to hear nothing. I just need a, I just need a, a second to try to recalibrate because I'll get so many questions and so much concerns and everybody's situation is real, but it's too much for one person to deal with. I don't know. Many of you may not understand what I'm saying and 
hopefully one day as you grow in understanding and you grow in position, you'll get what I'm saying. After a while, your mind fries. But you can't take in no more information. And I try to take everybody's phone call. I try to deal everybody's uh, everybody's situation. But it's impossible. That's why he told Moses, raise up captains and officers and put men in positions. Because one man or two men or five, they cannot do it all. You need to, and a good leader is going to train men that can do this. Where do we leave off at? Uh, verse 16. Uh, read it again. Uh, Matthew 8, verse 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now, now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. <laughs> he said, he said, it was coming. He said, listen, listen, we got to, we got we got to get to the other side. We got to go. We got to go. It's impossible. We, I'll tell you something. We're teaching. We was teaching over there. There's times that literally, if you don't stop, like the people won't leave. You're standing for 10 hours teaching. You're teaching the sun go down. You got your phone trying to keep it going. And the people are not going. You just have to get to a point where it says, okay, um, this is it for the day. So imagine what Christ was doing. We were just teaching. This man was healing people. So what that verse said again? Now when Jesus, verse 18, now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. <laughs> And Jesus saith unto him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. Man, I, I try to wrap my mind on what he was saying when he says that. He says, listen, I have no place. I have no place to really catch any rest. So everybody got a uh, uh, fox have his hole and a bird, have, but the son of man have no place to rest. What is he telling us that this is our life? You want this place? The Acts of the Apostles, this is what they did. Then we saw Paul's life. We saw Peter's life. We saw John's life. We saw Barnabas' life. Their life was consumed. You have to let go of something to grab this. I want to drop that right there. Sirach 44. Sirach chapter 44, verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 44, verse 4. Leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people, wise and eloquent in their instructions. Such as found out musical tunes and recited verses in writing. Rich men furnished with ability, living peaceable, peaceably in their habitations. All these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. There be of them that have left a name behind them that their praises might be reported. So, and uh, is there more? No, sir. Okay. So let's go back to verse four, verse four leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people wise and eloquent in their instructions. Okay. It says leaders of the peoples by their counsel, leaders of the people by their counsel, and by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people, wise and eloquent in their instructions. You have to see yourself, men, as leaders. You want to earn yourself a name, you have to see yourself as a leader. And when you see yourself as a leader, you're going to be able, what does it say here? It says, uh, it says, and by their knowledge of learning, meet for the people. And by the knowledge of their learning, they'll be right instructors, instructors for the people. So if you're not studying and applying, if you're not getting experience by traveling, 
teaching, you're not going to make yourself a right leader. You have to see yourself as one. Remember, so if you desire the office of a bishop, you desire good work, you have to see yourself like that. You got to think like that. You have to move like that. You have to understand, position your life. Now, I know a lot of us are not in positions where, at least now in, in many of our lives, where we can travel the way we would like to travel or we would aspire to travel because of work situations. I get that. Myself, for many years, I didn't have the opportunity like that. But as you grow in understanding, if you're about this work, the Most High is going to make space for you. He'll make the ways for what he needs you to do. But in that, you're going to become an instructor to the people. So I said, some people don't have it. Some people don't have that mind to be like that. But if you want to be part of 144,000, you're going to need that mind. You're going to need, you're going to need that, that wise counsel. You're going to be able to, be able to give wise counsel. Verse 5. Verse 5. Such as found out musical tunes and recited verses in writing which man furnished with ability, living peaceably in their habitations. All these were honored in their generations and were the glory of their times. There be of them that have left a name behind them and their praises might be reported. And that's what you want. You want to be able to leave a name behind you and your praise be reported. You want to be able to leave a legacy. I would think that's what you all want to do. Am I correct? Okay. You want to know when you leave this earth that I made noise in this truth. And I did it to the glory of the Most High. Those men that want to stand at the 144,000 are those that's going to stand stiffly for this. And they're going to mirror themselves after the acts of the apostles. I always think about I always go back to Paul, his life. He, he did so much traveling and reaching so many places to spread this word. And many other apostles too. Timothy, their life was dedicated to this. And we're still talking about them today. <laughs> we're still, their names are still etched in our minds. Why? Because of their labor. I'm going to ask you a question, brothers. In, this, in IUIC, brothers that, that you see laboring, name one brother. I'm going to see if you, name one brother that you say that you think is extraordinary in his labors. And don't use Nathaniel or nothing like that. Name brother. Let me see if you think right here. OC, you see Officer OC. Okay. Who else? Captain Hoshai. Okay. Who who was gonna say Hoshai other than him? Anybody else? Okay. I want to tell you something. You see Captain Hoshai? And not the uh, OC don't labor either, don't misinterpret. Oshai is a different type of man. <laughs> I, I, I be, I didn't tell you, most high got a spirit on that man that's, he's, he's playing on a whole different level. I've never seen anybody do a hundred days of camp. Well, I have the men that's with him. I seen him do it. A hundred days of camp straight. People can't, people, people, brothers have a problem doing one week of camp. Hey, they, every other week they got an excuse. He do a camp a hundred days, and he, and he did it back to back. Listen, Hoshai, right now, when I say travel, with a, with a wife and children. Hoshai was in England in the last three months. About he had been about five, t- no, no, more, more than three months. He had been at least five times, three, four times in the last three months, outside of. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got this. T- yeah, they asked him. They asked him. They asked him at the airport. He finally got through. They asked him at the airport, like, "Why are you here for?" He said, "I'm visiting." He said, "You just here?" So I was visiting then. So they, they had, and every time they go, 
except this time, they hold him in immigration for about anywhere five to eight hours. They'll hold him. That including Ghana. He's back. He just got back from where we came from. He popped around. I just looked online just now. He's in San, uh, he's in St. Louis. <laughs> I, I don't know. He's, most I got a spirit on that man. He got a spirit on him. And many of brothers too. OC and many of brothers doing the work. But he stands out to me because I know what it is to go to camp. And I'm like, 100 days? He's been doing this for years? And he's still very young in the truth also. But he's he on fire. He's on fire for this truth. That's a good, that's, he's, a, he's a very good person to, to uh, um, pattern yourself after as far as the level of zeal. We just pray that he endures and keeps up like that spirit. Because if you have a bunch of men like that, man, we put thousands of people in these doors every, every week. Uh, what was the last thought we had about men with the names, right? Uh, okay. It says they make, they make good leaders good leaders behind that. Go to Acts 18. We're going to wrap up in a second. Coming to the end of my thought. Acts 18. Well, let's go um, 1824. Acts chapter 18 verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus this man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Now, this man only knew the baptism of John. But what I want about it, whatever he knew, he taught diligently. He didn't understand the, the, he didn't understand the mercies in Christ. But he was a studied man. So many of you, what you know, Teach that diligently. The point out is that he's just diligent about it. And because of his diligence, just knowing the baptism of John is recorded in his scriptures. He was addicted to what he did. He earned his name by his done. Read that verse one more time. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord knowing only the baptism of John. Only knowing the baptism of John. Let's go from there. I want to go to 2 Maccabees 8. Second Maccabees, the 8th chapter and the 20th verse. Second Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 20. And he told them of the battle that they had in Babylon, with the Galatians, how they came but 8,000 in all to the business and with 4,000 Macedonians and that the Macedonians being perplexed, the 8,000 destroyed and 120,000 because of the help that they had from heaven and so received a great booty. Thus, when he had made them bold with these words and ready to die for the laws and, for, and the country, he divided his army into four parts and joined with himself his own brethren, leaders of each band, to wit, Simon and Joseph and Jonathan, giving each one 1,500 men. Also, he appointed Eleazar to read the holy book. And when he had given them this watchword, the help of God himself leading the first band, he joined battle with Nicanor. So watch this. Let's go back and read that again. Start with verse 20. Uh, Second Maccabees chapter 8 verse 20. And he told them of the battle that they had in Babylon with the Galatians. And they came but 8,000 in all to the business. And it, said, and it says they came 8,000 to the business. <laughs> they came to the job where it has to be done. This is about for war. Read on. With 4,000 Macedonians and that the Macedonians being perplexed. The 8,000 destroyed and 120,000. And guess what? The Macedonians were perplexed because 8,000 came to destroy that number. How was that? How was 8,000 men? God was with them. There was all on one cord. There was about the business. With little numbers that we have, look what we have done. Giving all praises to the most high. 
Who was around the 10th anniversary other than right here on the podium? Anybody out here been around from IUIC's 10th anniversary? So everybody here came after that, right? What year was that? What year are we in right now? 17? 2000. Who's around 2013? 2013. So you're around for the 10th anniversary? Okay. Okay, 10th anniversary, 2013 to now. Look what has transpired in this country. Give it all praise to the most. Look what has transpired. Just with a few men. I mean, we had a, we were small. But the most high be with us because our works is to bring glory to him. And applying his commandments of faith is to bring to him. Listen, back then in 2013, we was just really traveling around the states, if that. Most of us just, we stayed on cities. We went to, might have went to one or two states, but it wasn't regular. Man, in less than four years, we were around the world. I could tell you this year, the places we traveled and where we're going, uh, I got a trip coming up, Lord Spare Life. I, th- I don't know, I think it's either Cuba or Haiti. One of these, that's next couple, that's right after Tabernacles. And then they go, yeah, and there's Cuba the same weekend or a weekend after, or week the week after. Man, we aren't, we, 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 most sides moving this thing. But the point is that it was just a few core men that moved and was able to do this. Our few core needs to grow a little more because we're talking about raising 144,000 men and a multitude that no man can number. It can't be done with five men. We need these men. So read that verse again. Let's finish it off. Second Maccabees chapter eight, verse 20. He told them of the battle that they had in Babylon with the Galatians, how they came, but 8,000 and all to do the business with 4,000 Macedonians and that the Macedonians being perplexed the 8,000 destroyed and 120,000 because of the help that they had from heaven. And so received a great booty. Thus, when he had made them bold with these words and ready to die for the laws and the country, he divided his army into four parts. Now, this is a leader that's able to incite or invoke a spirit upon those men that look at their numbers and say, listen, we can beat that. Are you ready for the charge? Are you ready to take on this enemy? He says, and once he did that, He said, and thus, when he made them bold with these words and ready to die for the laws and the country, he divided the armies into four parts. He said, okay, I'm going to divide the army into four parts. Read. Verse 22. And joined with himself his own brethren, leaders of each band. He says he joined with himself leaders. Each, read again. Each band. Each band. So each man in their rightful place were leaders. They were respected as leaders. They were seen as leaders. So now they was able to break them down into four parts, set these men over them, and these men followed them. Read on. And joined himself with his brethren, leaders of each band, to wit, Simon and Joseph and Jonathan, giving each one 1,500 men. And he appointed Eleazar to read the holy book. And when he had given them this watchword, the help of God, himself leading the first band, he joined battle with Nicana. And by the help of the Almighty, they slew above 9,000 of their enemies and oh, wounded Jesus. and maimed the most part of Nicana's host and so put all to flight. And they was given the victory. Each of these men were leaders in their own right. Each of them was able to instruct. Now, how can they do that? They got to see themselves as that. They have to see themselves. Proverbs 23. The Proverbs 23rd chapter and the 7th verse. The book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. It says, as a man think in his heart, so is he. So if you see yourself as a, as a man of God, if you see yourself as the 144,000, if you see yourself and want to mirror yourself after the acts of the apostles, then 
your behavior and your works will follow in suit. But if you don't see yourself like that, then you're not going to do nothing great. Just be whoever. I don't know what you're going to be. Men have to see you like that. Okay, we're going to wrap up in a second. I want to go to, uh, what's this, uh, uh, um, the grain of a mustard seed? Um, Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. So the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. That's it? Where, where, where? Yeah, verse 5 is. I'm sorry, I'm losing, I can't find it. Oh, read on. And the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. What? Okay, finish, read on. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by, which he is come from the field, go sit down to meet, and will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Okay, I want to see if you all can put together the, the, the thought here. Verse 5, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Verse 6, and the Lord said, if you had faith as the grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should, isn't it? And it should obey you. What does he say about faith? Well, all he's saying about faith is a mustard seed starts out small and then it grows. No, no. That's what I'm saying about that's the, that's the point. He's saying you could tell you could tell it and move and it's going to move. What's he trying to say? Uh, he's saying that um, if you have faith, a grain of a mustard seed, then something you can do something that powerful. You, okay, yeah, stay, 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 stay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just talk to me a little more about it. Tell me. Yeah, right. What you're saying is right. If you got the faith as, as small as a mustard seed, you could do what? Uh, you could do anything. You could tell, tell the tree, hey, look, move, and it's going to move. So he's saying basically just if you had faith to grain of mustard seed, whatever you set your mind to, you guys can do as Israelites all together being on one accord. You, 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 was, you were good. Right. The last part is not what I was – the last part strike. But, yeah, you're right. Okay. I, there's certain words I wanted you to use, but what you're saying is right. He's saying, you can sit down now. He's saying that if you have, okay, I'm not even going to say it. Let's just read on. Uh, verse 6 again. Uh, yeah. Luke 17 and 6. And the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. And it should obey you. Read on. But if, which, you, if, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, it should obey you. Read on. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet, and will not rather now, say... Now, now what it says, which of you, let's stay with the faith of... Let's stay with, with uh, increase all faith. It says, which of you have a servant, will send to the servant after he plowed a field, uh, or feeding the cattle, will say to him, go and sit down to eat. Read on. Verse 8, and will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken. You said, what would it say to the servant after he finished doing his job? Now listen, I need you to go prepare the food for me and get this ready. Read on. And afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? He said, do you thank the servant because he did the things that was commanded him? I troll not. He said, I troll not. So what is he trying to say about your faith? Before you answer, I want to say something. They, the, 
the apostles said to Christ, increase our faith. He was, he said to them, if you had faith, you can command the tree to move and it should move. If your faith is strong, you could command your servant, even after he did his chores to go get the food prepared for me, let me eat and then he can eat. What does he say about faith? What's directly tied to faith? Authority. Thank you. You can command. You can move things. Move men. But you got to walk like that. You got to see yourself as a commander. You have to see yourself as an apostle. And then you can do those mighty acts. You only listen because, uh, yeah, you know why you see me as a bishop? Because I see myself as that. Because I carry myself as that. I speak as one with authority. Or I could be, me, 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 me. you wouldn't follow me. And then Lord said, you're like, who's that? Get the hell down from up there. I listen to you. All right, yes, what you going to say? Well, basically, faith is a servant unto you, basically. It says, as a man thinketh, so is he. We just read that first. I read that first. But what you see yourself as. Right. So, what you, so you, are you agreeing or you don't agree? I'm, I'm, so, I'm not sure what you say. Okay, so we're on the same page. Okay, cool. Right. That's why he was saying it should, when your faith is strong, you can command and it should move. You can command men. So, what he said about the servant, that da that and your servant prepare and after that prepare you know okay a servant comes out from the field he's tired for the day for him not to sit down and eat and you tell him listen I want something else he got to respect you because he just I, I, I was just working all day I, was, I, didn't use that word. I was working all day in the field you said yeah I know you was but I'm hungry right now go prepare my food he got to respect you but he's not going to do it if he don't see you as a man of authority and not that you're trying to abuse him, because some people get stupid and want to abuse him. That's what it's talking about. It's saying that he has so much reverence for you, and your faith is so strong in who you are, they're going to say, oh, yes, sir, okay, and I'll get that, and then I'll sit down and eat. Yeah, that's exactly how I want it. Now, do everybody understand? Okay, something you want to say? Because I'm done. Hey, Bishop, yeah. real quick. Yeah. That also applies in a marriage as well. So a lot of times, you brothers, y'all be wondering why things ain't going right. It's because you don't see yourself as a prophet or the Lord or the head of your own household for things to go down. Oh, we about to open now up a getting, door. Now it's, oh. getting, now it's getting real heated right now. You want to open that door? Yes, that's a good point. I like that. Yeah, you don't see yourself as Lord in your house. But now, mind you, is the way you carry yourself also. Don't think it's just, I believe I can fly. Well, then jump. That ain't the no. That ain't the no. You got to carry yourself like that. Your behavior has to be indicative of that. You have to also set forth that example. I'm telling you, don't follow no man that ain't willing to put himself on a line like he would ask you. A good leader had to have been a good follower. But if a brother has faith you're going you're gonna to see yourself a certain way. You're going to carry yourself a certain way. And you're going to demand. And men will follow. That's how we're going to build the kingdom. By the acts. All right. So, uh, there's a few more scriptures. Uh, you know what? One more scripture. One more scripture. Uh, and that's it. John 12, 21. So, when they ask Christ... Increase our faith. He said, man, behave yourself like men. Quit yourself like men. Increase our faith. What do you think he'll do? He think he'll say, they said, Jesus, increase my faith. He didn't go, your faith has been increased. <laughs> Christ said, man, carry yourself. It should obey yourself if you want it to move. What do you mean, touch you? Go to Catholic Church for that. That's what they touch you. <laughs> the book of John, chapter 12, verse 21. Uh, no, no, 12, 21, verse 15. I said 12? Yeah. Y'all got to stop listening to me. 
John, chapter you know, so I'm getting worse with this stuff. I be, I be, yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you, don't get me worried. We don't. John chapter twenty one verse fifteen. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon, Simon of son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him. Feed my lambs. Yeah, you say you love Jesus. Jesus said, feed my lamb. Read on. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my sheep. Yeah, you say you love me? Go ahead, feed the sheep. Then. Feeding He's, the sheep means to teach the people. If you love me, do the work. Don't say you love me. Show me you love me by raising up the people. That's what I need. So we say we love God, love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Get to work and shut up. <laughs> Just do the work. Your work will tell me. Wait on. Verse 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. Peter got pissed off. Like, come on. You keep on asking me the same thing. Read on. Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. He said, you know that I love you. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Jesus said, yeah. He said, I, you know, come on, man. Don't stop asking me the same. You know I love you. Jesus said, yeah, okay, then go feed my sheep. Read on. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. When Christ thou, said, truly, truly, I'm going to tell you something, Peter. When thou was young. When thou was young. Thou girdest thyself. You gird yourself up. You get dressed. You decked out. Read on. And walk is whether thou wouldest. And you walk wherever you choose to when you was young. Read on. But when thou shalt be old. But when you get old, Peter. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hands and another shall gird thee. And when you get old, you're going to stretch out your hand. Another one going to have to dress you, Peter. Because you're going to get old. Read on. And carry thee whether thou wouldest not. And he, they're going to take you where you don't want to go, Peter. You said about, yeah, you know that I love me. Read on. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. He said, Peter, they're going to kill you. And this is how we're going to find out. And you're going to glorify God by you dying, Peter. Then he said what? And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. He said, so you ready to follow me? Come on, follow now. Hope you understand what he's saying there. He's saying, go teach. Everybody got these big swelling words. Yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the songs y'all be singing? All right, okay, all right, okay. We're going to see. Feed them. He said, listen, Peter, uh, they're going to kill you. And that's how God going to know you're going to glorify him. Now, follow me. When Christ said that, what did Christ do? He died on the cross for his people. So if you want to sit as 144,000, some of you are going to go in jail, some of you are going to die, some of us are going to die. We talk of big swelling words. But he said, I'm going to let you talk now, but I'm just warming you up if you want to follow the acts of the apostles. Or you go back to Christian church and you can sing. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Now, we're trying to bring about the kingdom. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.